I wasn't going to bother filming this, but I thought actually <laughs> this might be useful for uh, somebody else. Uh, this uh, Meanwell power supply on the Ender 3 Pro. Um, I'm going to be re reprinting uh, this stand once I've worked out exactly what the uh, delamination problem is. And uh, currently, well, the original has uh, the crimped on terminals here. That goes to the power supply, and then you've got this stupid little short bit, uh, and then you've got a slightly longer bit coming out of the machine. So this is the bit that's on the power supply. I mean, a couple of things first of all. They've just crimped on the terminals. Um, you, you've got a crimp and solder. That's, you know, that's it. That's how you do it properly. You don't just crimp something on. And uh, the reason I've been able to reuse these crimped on connections is because I could just pull the wires out. Uh, <laughs> next thing, I don't care whether it's 24 volts or 5 volts, you did not have the male connection like that with the power on it. If that's unplugged, it's uh, got 24 volts on it, you happen to drop something near it, I don't know, whatever you, you have to be working on, touches the two terminals and shorts them out briefly. Now I'm sure this is fully protected, this power supply, but it's not really the point. Live terminals need to be protected and that's the end that should have the live uh, on there. I've also fitted a really long cable for the time being because I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to mount this in the end. So I just bought uh, some silicon 14 gauge uh, 200 degrees C uh, cable. I think, you know, was it a couple of metres length? I can't remember. Uh, silicon, absolutely good quality. And uh, I bought some uh, connectors. These are XT60H connectors. Whether they're genuine or not, uh, I don't know, but they've gone on <laughs> just fine. Uh, solder connections. Um, let me just show you one of those. So you literally have the solder connections here. You uh, put the cable through here to start with, and then just clip the two together like that, and you are done. So uh, that's what we've done. Now because the, the machine end has uh, got that end on and it wants to plug into this, which I've now changed, I'll have to change the, uh, the, the adapter, you know, this on the, uh, the connector on the Ender 3 Pro end, uh, or I might just go straight in to the machine. I suppose it makes sense to be able to unplug it and disconnect it for maintenance. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I'd uh, show you that. I've just popped a little bit of heat shrink around there to uh, protect these wires from being pulled on. It's quite strong like that. Same here, a little bit of heat shrink and uh, we are done. Probably going to have to redo the stupid mains connectors at some point. They uh, don't seem, I'm not going to tug them particularly, they just certainly need soldering on. Um, but uh, that's for another day, I just wanted to get this done today and then we'll get on with uh, the problem with this delamination which I suspect is going to be uh, extruder feed rates and uh, temperatures and a few other things that we're going to be looking into probably at the weekend now. Uh, anyway, hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, if you're going to stick with the original, at least um, take the connections out and just re and solder these. Uh, or crimped on connections on. That's pretty easy to do and uh, they certainly won't be pulling out then. But if you're going to do it properly just completely change this to a new bit of length of uh, lead that you want and uh, make sure the live, uh, you know, the live wires are protected like that and not like that. So uh, rather than have a connector joining the wires on the outside I just thought I might just uh, get rid of this completely and go straight into the board just unscrewed all of the covers pretty straightforward just the fan connector there that's to cover up the USB and SD card slot so yeah just a few screws no big deal the 
power goes straight in it goes through this bit of tape. I don't know whether that's sticky, it seems to be stuck to it very slightly. Um, and it just goes in here as you can see there. You've got the various drive ICs here. Pretty basic board and probably no doubt this is going to get changed at some point. I don't know what chip that is. Can we zoom in? No, perhaps not. I can't read it where I'm stood, but uh, does that say 80 mega? Yeah, probably. A bit of hot melt glue has been used on some of the connectors by the looks of it. That's what that is there. So yeah, I think we're just going to uh, go straight in here. That's just the screw terminal. So yeah, I'll probably tack this video onto the uh, the other one about the power supply cable. So yeah, all looks pretty straightforward. No big surprise really. Okay, just. Uh, a little bit of information really. Uh, this is the longer cable that was coming out of the machine. You'll, <clears throat> you'll notice there's a lot of solder on there. I'm not a big fan of soldering thicker gauge cables like that. When they're, uh, when they're tightened up in the connectors they, you often get a bit of solder creep. Um, it's very hard to flatten them tight enough uh, to uh, you know, stay tight and in fact uh, the connections were loose inside the machine and uh, all of the other screw terminals were also loose. Uh, anyway so what I've done is taken out the long cable from the machine I've put it, <coughs> excuse me I've put in the shorter cable that uh, came out of the power supply Oh dear, excuse me, and uh, the power supply wire full length yeah, can now go straight into that and uh, I will probably cable tie all this together and uh, I'll cable tie this one as well so it just can't be tripped over and pulled and pulled straight out of the socket. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do whilst you're in there, and I haven't put that cover on properly yet, is you might want to reroute the ribbon cable that goes to the display. Um, it's routed from factory in a manner that shortens it quite a bit, and uh, I want to tack this down onto the metalwork here. And just by rerouting it, I've given myself quite a bit of uh, free cable at this end just to keep it nice and uh, neat so um, the only thing I would say really if you want I would uh, I wouldn't mind if you just sort of tinned the very end of the wire just to stop it fraying uh, but the type of connector that's in there it's got a sort of finger that the screw screws down onto and then that presses on there so I've really got no issues with bare wires uh, being used there and just twisted so they're uh, nice and tight really yeah you know, thin wires I've got no problem with thin 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 wires but the thicker you get I don't, just don't think it's a very good idea and it was proved correct really by looking at the wires in there that were all loose uh, so that is that uh, we're just going to get this lid on tight um, I also notice I can see where this is being used you know, down here it isn't so much, uh, but you can see discoloration on there. So I don't know whether we should really put anything uh, on here. It's pretty dry. In fact, probably totally dry at the moment, so maybe we need to put something on there. There is a closer look at that dual drive filament feed. So we're going to have to recalibrate that. And they said it was E steps within the software. So basically, you measure out a given amount of filament, set the machine to extrude that same amount, and uh, just see where it ends. 
if you extrude the whole lot you've got the settings right if it's over or under you can uh, do some mathematics and uh, set the correct amount uh, I think I'm going to move this spool holder as well actually I saw a very clever design and it looked like the spool was sat on two, well, two, little, uh, two little legs one either side of it and it looked like the actual spool was running on bearings so it was like two bearings were pushed together and the spool sat in between the bearings and would just spin round gently rather than this jerky movement that you get with this uh, with this type of arrangement. Um, the reason I found this to be a bit of a pain is because the stepper motor is obviously always down lower than that and you can't get the bloody spool on and off without bringing out the, uh, the z-axis uh, so I think we will uh, see about another design there uh, that probably covers it for the moment um, we'll just get this reassembled and then uh, we'll get some Calibration done over the weekend. Oh, I did do one thing uh, yesterday. I did print off the Ender or the Creality uh, test dog. Now I've melted this slightly on the bottom with uh, my hot air gun, but uh, I don't think it's supposed to look like that. The actual body itself, you know, looks quite reasonable, but uh, there are some spots where you can crush it. Yeah, there you go. I don't know whether you can see that. I'm actually crushing that in. Now, I don't know whether you're supposed to be able to do that or whether that is just the rubbish um, settings that it's got at the moment. The problem with all of this is, uh, unless you have seen, <laughs> probably up close, one of these that's been printed properly, it, you'd be forgiven for thinking, well, you know, this looks pretty good. But just not knowing any better because you've never seen one uh, that's been done properly. I doubt that's correct. There, crushed that pretty good there. Seems uh, like it wouldn't be like that, ideally, and f certainly not finished like that. So if somebody's made one of these, just tell me, should this be solid? Um, you've only got the G code for this. Uh, you can't adjust any of the settings, I don't think. I think all the settings are in the G code supplied by Creality for that. Um, so, what should this look like? What should the base look like after it's been pulled off of the, uh, the little platform that's printed first? Yeah, don't know. Anyway, we'll get it calibrated tomorrow and we'll do a bit more uh, filming. But uh, yeah, I hope that helps with the uh, power supply. And uh, there we go, more to come. Okay, so I think that's today's tasks pretty much done. I have just put the power supply bolts back through with uh, a little uh, nut on the back just to make it look neat again. I much prefer it without the power supply. <laughs> being bolted uh, to the back there. Uh, the other thing is of course the power supply now is uh, right over there and in fact I could put it underneath the bench if I uh, chose to and that is just another fan out of the way that I don't have to, uh, to listen to. So uh, yeah that's that. Oh yeah, and in case you're wondering why I've turned it off and that is still lit, it's because it's plugged in to uh, the USB uh, port on the, uh, the computer ready for tomorrow's uh, calibration. So uh, yeah, it's not uh, <laughs> not the best board ever, is it? We've got uh, feed coming back from the motors and then they move. We've got the USB powering that partially now. I don't know how much it's powering it. Well enough to go into uh, everything but uh, yeah. Anyway, happy with that. 
got to change this, I think. I want that on a stand away from uh, the machine, I think. And as I said earlier, I did see one that was on some sort of roller bearing device. I'll uh, have to look that up, see what that is, and see if we can uh, make one. Or I suppose we could make an extension block and get this away. Uh, anyway, first for another day, but uh, yeah, happy with that.